Hey, this is Nick the Mining Book Guy. Today I've got a book that was well known when it was written, but probably not very well known these days. The Money Masters by John Train. John Train was an, has been an excellent writer over the last few decades, an investment manager himself. And there's a few important reasons um, to note the date of when this uh, book was published. There have been a few updated copies that don't include all the information from this 1980 version. I believe there might have been some versions in the in the late 70s, but keep that in mind. I, I would recommend you, you consider picking up an earlier version to make sure you don't miss that. But also, Warren Buffett was the first interview in this book. It's, it's the, the largest of the nine um, investment managers uh, interviewed, and it's very interesting how you could have picked up on all of this stuff that he talked about, already a lot of wisdom in there, and considered investing in Berkshire Hathaway just based on the book. Of course, this was written at a time when the general equities were completely in the doldrums, and that was something that, uh, you know, was a very difficult decision to, you know, consider buying stocks of any of the people that were involved in this book. But I think the most relevant thing, surprisingly relevant to mining and um, you know commodity speculation, was a section in his par or sorry, uh, basically um, a sentence or two in uh, his chapter. I'm going to read it word for word uh, because I no one talks about this anymore. In 20 years, he engaged in only two commodities transactions: recently in copper, and some years ago, before the price was um, was freed by the government in silver futures. Every time President Johnson announced that the price of silver would never rise, Buffett went out and bought more. So that's a huge deal. It's funny because uh, just uh, re recently, uh, the uh, Buffett had another annual uh, you know show, uh, a Berkshire Hathaway show in Omaha. And I am 100% sure they weren't talking about silver or futures or any of, any of those things. And I don't know if even in the last few decades any of that stuff was discussed. This ties in to what was happening um, described in the Money Game book where I, I have another video. So if you like these types of books, make sure you check out the Money Game uh, by Adam Smith, a.k.a. George Goodman, uh, because it's tied into this. Keep in mind, this written in you know, roughly 1980 they're only discussing all those silver futures transactions in the mid 60s. Even to this day, uh, th there's th there could be lots of these types of transactions happening now, even though no one's discussing commodities, or in, not no one, but people like Warren Buffett are not discussing commodities at all. I know th that I've read that Buffett was in, also involved with silver futures in the mid 90s. And even Bill Gates um, with some silver mining stuff. You don't. It's hard to find that information, but I think you should keep that in mind. That this book is relevant just for that aspect. It's really interesting to me that you can find that here, but in recent biographies or other writings, you won't find anyone talking about Warren Buffett dabbling in silver futures in the '60s, which was actually a very um, intelligent move at that time. So that's probably the most notable thing of this book. Um, in terms of content, but in terms of people, I want to discuss two that are that to me for me are standouts, but might not be for others. Uh, Stanley Kroll was um, the only person who made a small fortune in this book, focusing on commodities futures, and you can tell that John Train and a lot of other people, um, you know, investment managers at the time, looked down on the way that someone like Stanley Kroll made money. But when it comes down to it. Stanley made a small fortune by being in commodities very early, roughly, you know, 71, 72 to 1974, before people were even really talking about commodity futures. It didn't really blow up until, you know, the, the late 70s or the early 80s. And by then, that was actually a really bad time to enter that market. I don't think, I think, I, I think it's interesting. The, um, the author of the book clearly has a negative slant towards him and makes it seem like he got very lucky or perhaps luckier than the other people in terms of making their money. And I believe Stanley Kroll's 
strategies or tactics didn't work in other eras. It's the same type of thing, though, that we're looking for in the, in the junior mining world. You don't need to make money in the same way now that you've made, um, or, or what the way you make money now might not apply five years from now or 10 years from now or 20 years from now. A lot of people get rich by having the right um, methods at the right time and knowing when to get out. I think Stanley Kroll's chapter is one of the most valuable here for those reasons I just described. And uh, even though it's not juniors per se, it's commodity, speculation, and that's one of the main reasons to consider getting an older version of this book, because I don't think he shows up in, uh, in newer versions. At least uh, there, there, there definitely was an update. I didn't see him. So wanted to emphasize that. It was really neat to hear. I'm hoping that I get lucky in the same way that Stanley did over the next few years, and some of you, I'm sure, are hoping that as well for yourselves. But one other person to mention is Robert Wilson, and this is a really interesting person because he's probably the most successful and least talked about today. Uh, most successful meaning in the 1970s, I believe he was even more successful than Warren Buffett uh, at that period in terms of making money, very much uh, by shorting stocks as well as going long. And while his chapter doesn't have as many details as Buffett's chapter, he has a way of looking at things that was very much a precursor to the hedge funds of today, uh, but I believe he was he was much more successful than George Soros and Jim Rogers or other players of that time. And uh, it's just funny in a way that he's been forgotten. But a big reason is that he mostly managed money for himself. And so uh, he's worth reading about if you've never heard of him, Robert Wilson. And I actually have another book that I may uh, talk about in a future video. But for me, he's become more of a model for independent thinking. And I'm glad I reread this book because I kind of forgot his section as well. So, you know, as a recap, Warren Buffett, always interesting to read. Stanley Kroll, someone new. And Robert Wilson, probably someone you haven't heard about as well. Those three are the main reasons, but everyone in here, very interesting to follow. If you've read the Market Wizards books, which are much more popular, similar vein, but these are... Um, these are more forgotten than those Market Wizards books, and I think it's essential reading for anyone interested in investing and finance, and again, it surprisingly applies to the junior space as well. So consider getting this book, especially an earlier version of The Money Masters. This is Nick, The Money Book Guy. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.